What's up guys? Sorry to interrupt your regularly chronologically scheduled vlog, but I've got a big announcement and there's a reason I'm sitting at a teacher's desk like this. I'm bringing on an intern. Before I jump into the details about this, I just want to apologize about the audio because I know it's probably not very good, but I'm in a hotel room in South Africa and they had this really cool desk, so I had to take the opportunity to make this announcement while I had this awesome desk set up for the announcement. Um, about two, three years now, things have been good. Things have been fantastic. Uh, they can always get better, but they've been really good for me. Um, I've been extremely busy, especially over this past year. It's just been insane. This past year has been crazy. I haven't been sleeping very much because I just want to work and I love working, but there's just not enough time in the day. And I started to realize recently that I, I need help. I need help. Um, and then I also started thinking like, over the past seven years, how many times have people emailed me or shot me a message on Facebook asking how they could get into the industry, how they could learn about becoming a travel photographer or a travel writer, how they could become one themselves, uh, how I could help guide them. I've even had people ask if they could be my intern in the past. So I thought like, this is a way we can help each other. I can guide you guys through this process and you guys can help me out on my end. So that was the thought process and the decision making process in coming to the conclusion that I need to bring on an intern, at least for on a trial basis, to test it out, to see if it works for me, to see if it works in general, to see if I can afford it and all that stuff. So I'm doing it, it's happening. I wanna get into the when, where, why, how, all that stuff right now. So let's do it, it's on this fancy computer of mine. The win is in mid-March. I'm going to start this in mid-March. There's a conference in Berlin called ITB, and I'll probably go into this directly after that. Why am I waiting so long? Why am I gonna wait until mid-March? It's just gonna take time. I know there's gonna be a bunch of applications, but then there's also at least a month or so of planning to try to figure things out. So I wanna take care of things now. I'm gonna open the applications today today. There'll be a box somewhere around me hovering and you can click on that and it'll take you to my website and you can download the application and send it back to me. So the applications are open right now. I'm hoping to start meeting with people with a long list, just like a casual Skype conversation to get to know people about November 23rd. So pretty soon. Um, I'm in Cuba for a while after that. And then I'm hoping that after Cuba, I should have a short list figured out so mid to end of December. And by the start to middle of January, I'm hoping to have the candidate figured out. And uh, then we'll spend the rest of the, that month and February doing the planning for the big trip that you'll be doing with me if you get selected. The trip, the first trip I'm gonna do is a month or four weeks, probably four weeks. The idea behind this is that yes, it will just be four weeks. I need to test out to see if it's gonna work for me. And then I have to start playing on things. It might be one candidate comes on for four weeks and then I love them and I'm like, hey, can you stick around for another four weeks? Or if you wanna go home, go home and then I would love to have you on a future trip. Or it might be that I'm like, hey, this is a great learning experience and I can teach people a lot in four, four weeks. So maybe I'll just turn it into a bit of a revolving door in which I'm constantly bringing on new interns and assistants and, and trying to spread the wealth around as much as I can. But this four week period to start is just kind of the trial, as I mentioned. Um, you're probably wondering where you would be going if you get selected to be my intern. And yes, you'd be traveling with me. You'd be on the road with me 24 seven. Well, not 24 seven, you get the sleep. I don't sleep very much, but you can sleep if you want to. The idea right now is likely the Philippines or Indonesia, but it's not set in stone. Whenever I go somewhere, even though I'm freelance, I have to run it by clients that I'm on contract with. I have to talk to them and discuss, and I have to pitch a bunch of different ideas to other clients to make sure that I can make money from that trip, to make sure I don't you know, just lose money on the trip. So I'm wanting to go to either Philippines or Indonesia. I think I can make that work, but who knows, it could be Brazil. We'll have to figure that out later. Um, 
and hopefully you're flexible if you're one of the candidates. Now you're probably wondering most about the who. Who am I looking for? What's the ideal candidate? And before I talk about that, let me tell you who's probably not the ideal candidate. If you're just somebody that wants a four week vacation or a four week workcation where you're just traveling and working and you have no intent on turning this into a career, then it's probably not for you. You might do a fantastic job, you might be just as good as anyone else, but the whole idea behind this is to teach somebody or to push somebody to the next level in their career. So I don't really want somebody that's just looking for a vacation that's a bit of a workcation. Um, the other type of person I probably am trying to avoid, although I might be convinced about them, is somebody that's married that has a family, like a young family and kids. Just because I don't want to put that strain on the family, I know how tough it is to be away for so long. And secondly, I, like I said, I'm potentially looking for somebody that's around long term. and. It's much more complicated when there's a family involved. Do you have a boyfriend or a wife back home? That's cool, that's fine, as long as they're okay with you being away all the time. But if there's kids and stuff like that involved, I kind of just wanna stay away from that. I don't wanna be the cause for problems in your family. Um, the third candidate, and I know it sucks, but if you're from one of those countries that has a really hard time getting visas, it's probably not gonna work just because it constantly in this job, you need to be chasing visas, you need to be going to places. And I know that I come from a country of privilege where it's really easy and it sucks if you don't. I know how unfair that is, but the ideal candidate's probably gonna be coming from like Australia, New Zealand, um, Canada, North America, Europe. My ideal candidate, I really have two people in mind that I'm thinking of at the moment. Ideal candidate number one is somebody who's already a travel writer or photographer. Somebody that's already in the industry and maybe isn't doing it full time, maybe is doing it as a passion project, but wants to make it their full time career. This person's already established, they have their social media, they have their website, they might even be getting some work in the industry already, but they just need help getting that push to the next level on a business standpoint and a professional standpoint. So that's one ideal candidate. Ideal candidate number two is actually almost the opposite. It's somebody that maybe just graduated school and really, really loves the idea of being a travel writer or photographer. And they want insight into that life. They want to figure it out. They want to see if that's their career path. And I think those two t types of candidates are people I can really help. I think I can push the person that's like, hey, this is my hobby, I want to make my dream a reality, or this is my hobby, I want to turn it into my career. I think I can push them to that level. And I think that I can show the person that's thinking it might be a cool career and is quite young and trying to figure out life, I can show them that either it's going to be what they want or maybe it's just not for them. So those are my two candidates. Those are the types of people I'm looking for, but I'm open and completely open and open. Did I say I'm open? I'm open to whoever, as long as you can convince me that, uh, that you need the help, I guess, is important. Um, some character traits that I'm looking for in an ideal intern, mentee, assistant. I need somebody who's as hardworking as I am. And maybe that's not fair. Maybe somebody who's almost as hardworking as I am. I know that I'm incredibly hardworking and that I work too hard. I just want somebody that's wanting to actually work for what they get, that doesn't just feel entitled to it. I'm, I want somebody that's willing to chase it and push for it. I need somebody that's determined. You need to like not be giving up on everything that goes wrong. I need somebody that's patient. And this isn't really a character trait, but I need somebody who's fit and healthy. I need somebody that can climb mountains and can run down streets. I know how energetic I am and I know how fast I go. And I can't have somebody that's slowing me down constantly. In fact, ideally, I'd love somebody that could push me even harder. Um, but. In this industry, you spend a lot of time walking and a lot of time out in the heat, a lot of time climbing mountains for shots, a lot of time racing around, and you, you need to be fit for that. And I know that even when I got a little bit unfit recently, it was way harder for me than it is now that I'm back in shape. So it's not a character trait, but I would, ideally you need to be a little bit fit for this job, I think. 
Some skills that I'd hope a candidate would have. Photo and video editing aren't essential, but if you have those things, it's a huge bonus. One of the things I really struggle with on a day-to-day -day basis is finding enough time to photo and video edit. And I'm the type of person that loves creating, but really doesn't like the editing process. I edit as quick as I can just to get it over with. So if you have those skills already, that's a huge bonus. If you don't have those skills, it's not the end of the world. I can teach them. Um, camera skills. If you already are a photographer or a videographer, those are huge bonuses because again, you'll be filming a lot, you'll be shooting a lot, you'll be handling cameras a lot, um, and you should be happy being on camera as well. You'll be on this vlog. If you're an intern, you're going to be on this vlog. And not only that, but in this job, a lot of times I'm looking for models. I'm looking for people to give scale to my scenes. So the intern on in certain occasions might be working as a model. They might be wearing some gear from Eddie Bauer and standing on a cliff edge or something like that. So I need you to be comfortable in front of the camera and behind the camera, or at least open to be becoming comfortable in front of the camera. Uh, it's not a skill, but you should also have your own camera kit. It doesn't need to be a fancy, crazy camera kit, but it should at least be a basic uh, camera setup that you can shoot with and learn with. You might have the opportunity, in fact, I'm 100% sure you will have the opportunity to use my gear and to test out my gear and shoot some of my gear out in the road, but you should have your own setup as well. Let's talk about job duties super quick. Um, the job duties of a travel photographer's assistant are crazy because the life of a travel photographer is crazy. Essentially, you'll just be taking chunks out of what I do on a day-to-day -day basis and doing them yourself. On a day-to-day -day basis, I'm organizing transport, I'm organizing hotels, I'm pitching clients, I'm shooting, I'm editing, I'm racing out to get food, I'm filming, I'm doing all sorts of things and you'll be doing all of those things. You might be pitching clients, you might be organizing hotels, you might be planning travel, you might be chasing bus tickets, you might be editing video, editing photos, you might be that model on the cliffside, um, modeling Eddie Bauer clothing, or you just, you might be shooting. Now I've talked for a while about what I'd be getting out of this. I wanna talk about what you'd be getting out of this. This is an unpaid internship. Uh, I just don't have the capacity to be paying an intern. I would absolutely love to. And there is the potential that if this goes really well, and if this increases my productivity a lot, that it could lead to jobs. It could lead to paying internships or paying assistant jobs as well. But for the moment, for this four week period, this is an unpaid internship. You will be having everything else paid for for you. You'll have your flight to and from the destination covered. You'll have your transportation on the ground covered. You'll have your food and drink covered on the ground. You'll have your visas covered, snacks, water, basically everything unless you're like a huge alcoholic and you need to party every night. I won't be covering those and I won't be covering souvenirs. I'm not going to buy you I love the Philippines t-shirts everywhere we go. If you want that stuff, you got to get it yourself. Um, but basically all your requirements for travel for those four weeks will be covered by me. And of course, not only do you get all that travel, but it's the on the ground learning capacity that you're going to get because not only will you be assisting me, but I will be assisting you. Whether you're a newbie trying to build a website or social media profiles, or whether you're a pro trying to learn and hone in on your pitching skills and finding clients and trying to figure out what it takes to get there, we're gonna go through all that. And on a day-to-day -day basis, we're gonna, we're gonna learn. You're gonna learn from me, and the chances are I'll probably learn some stuff from you guys as well. Um, so this is a huge learning opportunity. And if I was in my first or second or even third year of photography, I would be jumping all over a job opportunity like this. I've learned as much even in just one day shooting with another pro as I do a month on my own. And I think a whole month with a professional out on the road will be like a full university degrees worth of instruction. I really do believe that. So. Um, I hope that that explains everything and if it doesn't click on wherever I put this box annotation and go to my website and read about it and um, and find out how you can apply and find out all that good information. It, this is exciting. I'm really excited. You can probably tell that I'm stoked about this. This is something I've been wanting to do for ages 
and just haven't had the fiscal capacity or time um, time frame open to do it. So I'm super excited for this and I, I know that I'm gonna find a, an amazing person because I posted to my Facebook page just saying that I was thinking about doing this and I got like 20 or 30 emails and messages from people uh, explaining why they'd be an ideal candidate and most of them probably would have been. So I know I'm gonna get something amazing from this. I know you guys are gonna have an amazing time and together we're gonna do some really cool things. So head over to my website and apply or just read about it. And if it's not for you, but you think somebody might love it, share this video, share it around, let the world see about it and help me find that ideal candidate. Anyways guys, I'm here in South, South Africa and I'm way behind on vlog uploading because I haven't had good internet, but uh, I'm getting back around to it. So there should be regularly, regularly scheduled vlogs coming up from now until, well, forever, I hope. Anyways guys, I'll catch you next time and good luck with the applications. Peace.